Walking with Dinosaurs not only excels in the education department, but also on all fronts of documentary making. First off, the stories of each of these six episodes are all captivating and compelling, easily allowing the audience to get invested in the world of the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. We've already discussed many things about the excellent story of the female Tyrannosaurus from Death of a Dynasty, her efforts to attract a mate, her tense interactions with a male once he arrives, and her struggle to keep her nest safe from robbers is all suspenseful and keeps you on the edge of your seat, and you'll quickly attach to our adorable little babies once they finally hatch. You come to root for the mother Tyrannosaurus by the end due to all the effort she's put in to get where she is, which is part of what makes the ending that much more tragic. It makes you feel sympathy for the animal once you can get over how flawed the model is. But the stories for the other animals each episode chooses as its main focus are also just as well done. The story of the survival of the young Diplodocus crush in Time of the Titans is also great, and you easily come to side with the Diplodocus and want them to survive, as they make for endearing protagonists that also work as a great gateway through which this world of earth-shaking titans is unraveled before us. The episode intercuts between the small, vulnerable Diplodocus in the forest and the huge adults out on the prairies that are literally so large and powerful that they shape the very landscape around them, which not only shows what the youngsters will become should they reach adulthood, but also succeeds at showing how mighty the animal really was while also giving us protagonists for whom we can actually really be worried about. The young crash faces multiple trials, going from one threat to another without any place where it really ever seems like they're 100% completely safe, which actually makes you feel for them and it really shows how ruthless the natural world can actually be. Right when they're born, they are already being hunted by hungry ornithalestes, and later when they're still babies, they're stuck in a canyon with a stegosaurus and two allosaurus, which are among the most dangerous dinosaurs in the region. This scene in the canyon is iconic and easily one of the most famous and memorable scenes from the whole show, and for good reason. It's utterly fantastic. The build-up is perfect, and the whole scene is exhilarating and tense, while also being completely realistic and not over the top in the slightest. Once the crush is in their teen years, their forest home is devastated by a fire, forcing them out in the open prairies, which is unfamiliar territory for them, where they are vulnerable to predators and have yet to find a herd of adults that can defend them. And what makes this all work is that there are actually casualties, some seen and some unseen, which prevents the Diplodocus from feeling invincible, and that creates tension. The episode does end on an uplifting note, as the crush does eventually find a herd to settle with, and at the very end, the narrator reminds us of the beauty and magnificence of the enormous sauropods. Not only is this triumphant ending a satisfying payoff to watching the Diplodocus grow and struggle throughout the episode, but it's also congruent with the general tone and theme of the episode. This is another thing that makes Walking with Dinosaurs so memorable. Each episode has its own sense of identity, its own atmosphere, its own tone, and each leaves you with a different feeling during and after watching. Time of the Titans is about the dinosaur's success, and therefore is big, lush, green, and uplifting. It makes it feel like it's the golden age of the dinosaurs. While in Death of a Dynasty, despite the dinosaurs in the episode still being big and impressive, it feels like the last hurrah, and you are reminded of their impending doom early on, giving it a much more foreboding and melancholic feel. Cruel Sea sticks out from the rest especially. It's chilling, suspenseful, ambient, and feels almost cold, for lack of a better word, yet also somewhat relaxing. It has such an immersive atmosphere that's somewhat hard to describe, but when you watch it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It truly makes you feel like you're there underwater with all these strange sea reptiles. New Blood is another episode that has a very notably different tone. It has such a feeling of desolation, which perfectly conveys the suffering of the animals during the bleak, barren, dry season, a ruthless world that is the embodiment of the phrase, survival of the fittest. The animals are desperately clinging on for dear life, except for the Coelophysis, which represent the dinosaurs as a whole. This whole episode's story is meant to be symbolism for the rise of the dinosaurs above all other Triassic creatures. And we cannot talk about great stories from walking with dinosaurs without bringing up the fantastic story of the old male Ornithochirus from Giant of the Skies. Giant of the Skies is an especially remarkable episode, often considered the best of the series by many, including myself, as it really makes you feel sympathy for its protagonist. 
He is built up as this mighty, unchallenged beast. But as the episode progresses, we see more and more of his vulnerable side and really feel his desperation to get to the mating grounds. The journey he takes is breathtaking, and his climax is notoriously heartbreaking as you watch his world turn upside down once he arrives at the mating grounds. He goes from the dominant male that mated left and right to a pathetic outsider desperately trying to attract just one female. In the end, he slowly dies alone on a beach, which is enough to leave anyone in tears. The idea that anything would be able to make someone cry for a pterosaur that lived over 120 million years ago sounds ridiculous, but it happened. Another thing I really love about this ending is that I think the entire scenario regarding the mating grounds perfectly encapsulates natural selection. The journey to the mating grounds is like a test. The strongest, the ones most fit to survive, are able to make it and pass their genes to the next generation. Well, the weak ones don't get any mates and die without the chance to spread their genes. It's a process that innately weeds out the weak, like a natural filter. Each of these episodes has their own identity and character, and it immerses you completely with their brilliant atmosphere. The stellar writing is also accompanied by fantastic visuals and sound design. The spectacular presentation of Walking with Dinosaurs is one of the biggest things that truly has yet to be captured by any other documentary. Scenes like the entrance of the Brachiosaurus and Ornithochirus from Time of the Titans and Giant of the Skies, respectively, will send chills down your spine and give you instant goosebumps. But there is one species that dwarfs them all. He is Ornithochirus. 12 meters from wingtip to wingtip, with a body bigger than a man's, he is the undisputed king of the skies. One of Walking with Dinosaur's greatest strengths is that it knows when and how to be dramatic without ever going overboard. There are many grandiose moments that feel earned and never border on over the top. Not a single moment feels inappropriate. The cinematography is stellar, perfectly capturing the style and feel of nature documentaries about modern animals to the point where, from a cinematography standpoint, it's identical. The clips in which they use footage of modern animals to play their ancient Mesozoic relatives feels right at home with the shots of the CGI dinosaurs. Every shot is a work of art that looks like it could be a piece of paleo art. The framing is perfect, there are so many dynamic shots, there's not a single shot that doesn't look like someone could have realistically shot it with a real camera. Well, that's probably because it was all shot with real cameras in real locations, but that's part of what makes it look so realistic. Despite being on a lesser budget than Hollywood movies like Jurassic Park, and the animals having much more screen time, the special effects are exemplary for the time and still look pretty good today. The compositing of the authentic looking CGI animals into the real footage of actual locations is near seamless, and the fact that they are accompanied by very detailed puppets helps sell to the viewer that they are looking at real animals in their environments. The puppet head for the Ornithochirus is a great example. The attention to detail on it is stunning. The skin and filaments look true to life, and there is a remarkable amount of detail put into the eyes, to the point where you can even see the pupils dilate and constrict, which makes it look all the more real. While there is some puppet work that admittedly isn't the best, more often than not it is very impressive. The animation of the CGI animal models is impeccable as well. They all move very naturally and convincingly, with an astounding attention to detail and stunning fluidity and life in their movements. They truly move like actual animals, which is likely due to the fact that the animators took the extra step to actually observe modern animals and how they move, and then applied that knowledge, where fitting, into the animation of the prehistoric ones. The producers also went above and beyond when filming in the real locations to ensure that the animals could be integrated seamlessly later on by interacting with the environments for them. You can see the dirt and water disturbed by an animal's footsteps, and the rustling of nearby trees as the animal walks past and feeds on them, which again makes everything look all the more convincing. 
One example of how all the practical and computer-generated elements come together beautifully is the death of the Postasuchus from New Blood. The full-body Postasuchus prop truly looks like a dying animal, and the blending of the practical Postasuchus with the CGI Coelophysis is very impressive and pretty much seamless. Another perfect example of how the producers went above and beyond, this time with the practical effects exclusively, is the part where the Ornithochirus is fishing in the middle of his journey in Giant of the Skies. They rigged up a whole crane on a boat to move the Ornithochirus beak prop in the water for only two or three shots. If that's not dedication to your craft, I don't know what is. And finally, the respective noises the animals throughout the series make, as well as their inspired, beautiful color schemes, are very fitting and add character to all of them, making each and every creature memorable in their own ways. This incredibly realistic portrayal of Mesozoic life is amplified by Benjamin Bartlett's brilliant, awe-inspiring musical score that brings a huge presence of grandeur and pathos. Every single piece of music in the soundtrack is fitting for the scene it's in and immerses the viewer all the more. Bartlett's soundtrack makes you feel the sense of wonder of flying with the Ornithochirus, the rush you get to the mating grounds, and a tinge of the tragedy you know is coming. It makes you feel the true, immense weight of the mighty sauropods and the breathtaking Jurassic world around them with a thunderous, triumphant tone. It makes you feel the harsh, unforgiving conditions of the Triassic dry season. It makes you feel the heat of the conflict between the two bull Taurosaurus fighting for mating rights, the ending encapsulating the deadly consequences of the duel. It makes you feel the power of the Postasuchus and Tyrannosaurus, while also eerily foreshadowing their unfortunate fates. It makes you feel tense as two Allosaurus enter the canyon where the young Diplodocus Crush and the Stegosaurus are refreshing themselves, and the thrill of the face-off between the large carnivore and plated herbivore. It makes you feel the wonder of all the life in the South Pole springing back up from a long hibernation. It makes you feel the suspense and ambience of the cruel yet gorgeous reptile world seas. It makes you feel sorrowful as a beautiful, chilling, yet heart-wrenching piece plays over the death of the Ornithochirus and the aftermath of the comet strike that kickstarted the disasters that wiped out 75% of all life at the end of the Cretaceous. It's excellent in its own right, perfectly fits the series, and is part of what makes it so special. It makes you feel. That's something that's so amazing about the entire series. It makes you feel. Finally, another aspect of the auditory experience of the documentary that it nails is the narration, which is done by Kenneth Brano. His performance is among the best of any wildlife documentary. His brilliant shifts in tone perfectly portray the emotions of each scene, and the actual written narration has poignant diction that sticks with you. There's a reason that there are so many iconic quotes from Walking with Dinosaurs that people still remember after all this time. One perfect example is the intro of Giant in the Skies, which is as poetic as it is impactful. In life, he was the most magnificent beast ever to take to the wing. He ruled the sky supreme, flying far and wide over the lands of the dinosaurs. This is the story of the last journey this giant ever made. That 30 second scene alone is a perfect ballet of gorgeous cinematography, striking narration, and powerful music with a stunningly realistic pterosaur model to top it off. This intro is so unique and effective. Revealing the ending at the beginning has such nuance, and it works because you're left wondering how the Ornithochirus got to this point and what in his said journey led him to die, and that grips the viewer. The entire episode is unfolding how this character got to the point where he died alone on a beach. How he went from being a king to a sad corpse. So many things work together to make this series as a whole an emotional, engaging, and thrilling experience for the viewer. It's educational, exciting, and even moving. An emotional roller coaster that perfectly balances its drama with its information. I think a comment that someone left on the previous part of this essay that I completely agree with sums it up quite nicely. I think that what will always set Walking with Dinosaurs apart from all other documentaries is its artistic vision. 
from the shot composition to the music to the narratives, Walking with Dinosaurs is interested in its viewers feeling a certain way about what they're witnessing. It doesn't just communicate facts. It uses filmmaking to try and get across the feeling of whatever area it's showing, from the desolation of Chinley, to the majesty of the Morrison, to the melancholy of Hell Creek. No other paleo documentaries try to do that. No other paleo documentary aspires to be a piece of art, let alone succeeds as well as Walking with Dinosaurs does. I don't think I could have said that better myself. Walking with Dinosaurs was a huge critical success, and was even nominated for and won numerous awards such as Outstanding Innovation from the British Academy Television Awards 2000, Best Original Television Music from the 2000 British Academy Television Craft Awards, and multiple from the 52nd Primetime Emmy Awards. It won Outstanding Animated Program, Outstanding Special Visual Effects, and Outstanding Sound Editing, and was nominated for Outstanding Music Composition, Outstanding Sound Mixing, and Outstanding Programming. And it deserved all of them. All of this is why, despite all the new advancements in technology and progression in the field of paleontology, Walking with Dinosaurs is still the best. It is high art, a masterpiece in raw documentary making, with unparalleled atmosphere and authenticity and beautiful storytelling. It will take something mind-blowing to top it, something that depicts prehistoric nature and its life forms in an accurate, realistic, uncensored, serious yet engaging and spectacular manner. Something seeping with dedication and respect. Something with endearing, emotionally investing stories. Something with an incredible musical score. Something with excellent cinematography. Something with powerful, poetic narration. And something with seamless, gorgeous visuals that use well-utilized practical and or computer-generated effects that result in a perfect, convincing, vivid picture. Something that goes above and beyond. Something exemplary like Walking with Dinosaurs. Walking with Dinosaurs is exemplary because it shows nature at its most beautiful and its most cruel, its most pretty and its most brutal. Walking with Dinosaurs is exemplary because it's fantastically crafted in all aspects of production. Walking with Dinosaurs is exemplary because it's adult, bold, compelling, gorgeous, earnest, impressive, majestic, captivating, realistic, immersive, exhilarating, spectacular, poignant, awe-inspiring, brilliant, heartwarming heartbreaking, powerful, beautiful. Walking with dinosaurs is beautiful, and that is why it holds up.